you know, convince customers to work with you. Um, what challenges have you experienced so far uh, from a lead conversion standpoint? What are, what are some issues or some difficulties that you've noticed, um, you know, beginning your journey in, in, in real estate? Um, from my standpoint, it's almost like, I think I've been going mostly after the FISBOs, um, who's been on, uh, been trying to sell it for a while, but for some reason, they, they're still convinced they can sell. Okay, so some difficulty converting FISBOs. Okay. Right, right. So when you talk to a FISBO, I, I guess we'll start on the FISBO section here. This is a good segue into it. What is your initial, um, <clears throat> your, your first call? You, you're, you're picking up the phone or you're, you're door knocking uh, said FISBO. What, what is your first, um, what's your actually, intro? Actually, I've been texting because texting. I, um, I've been getting it off of Zillow and you know they have the homeowners numbers and i've actually been texting because usually when you when i call they don't answer but if i text they respond so what does your initial text look like then so if if you're texting a fisbo what are what are your what's your initial uh, outreach a asking if the the property is still available and if they say it's available um um you know reaching out to offer my assistance to see if i could help them sell it Okay. And that, uh huh. So, so your initial pitch is just so. So I, I guess pretend like I'm a Fisbo, and and you know, you're you're basically on an elevator. You know, to, you, you got to give an elevator speech real quick or an elevator pitch. Are you are you trying to back into the listing, saying that you have a potential buyer, or are you trying to, you know, um, <clears throat> are you just saying, hey, look, you know, I, I know that your property looks like it's been on the market for a while. Are you open to having a realtor assist you? Like, what is your, what is I'm, your, I'm not, I guess, your direction? I'm not saying that I have a potential buyer because I don't, but mm -hmm. um, it's basically, um, like I told you, trying to, to do open houses, like offer a, a free open house on the property. Okay. Yeah. So I used to, I used to work FISBOs a lot and um, FISBOs and expireds, but, but, primarily you, you, they, they, you approach them completely differently. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the FISBO obviously wants to save commission and they don't want to, you know, the whole reason they're doing FISBO is because they don't really want to, you know, pay out that commission. Whereas mm -hmm. the expired, you know, has obviously reserved to being open to working with an agent because they just hired an agent, even though they weren't successful in selling. Um, okay. So where are you getting the, the expireds from? Cause that's, that's where I'm lost at. Well, I'll, I'll come, let's, I want to, I want to still focus really quick on the, on okay. the FISBO and then we'll switch over to that. But okay, cool. <clears throat> so I do agree with, with some of your, um, your direction. When I used to work FISBO, I would never tell them I had a buyer already. I would never back my way into the appointment. Right. I think that's deceitful and, and yeah. I, I don't think it's the right way to do it. Cause the moment you tell them, you, oh, well, you know, I, I don't necessarily have a buyer for you. I just want to see the property. You, you've kind of lost some of that respect or, or, Right. You know, it appears that you're trying to, you know, they, they get that a lot from a lot of agents. Yeah. You know, the wow. number one way to get into a FISBO is to say, hey, I may have a buyer. Um, and yes, I am, Allison. <clears throat> so um, the way I used to do it and the way you're doing it already is, is really good is to provide some sort of value even before you're ever hired or considered for, for hire, you know, for mm -hmm. them considering to hire you. Um, so what I used to do is, um, I used to call, uh, or text works fine too. There's no, there's no, there's no bad, uh, mojo about texting, but I used to call and say, look, um, <clears throat> sorry about my, my throat. I totally respect your entrepreneurial spirit, right? I totally get the reason why you're trying FISBO is to save money. Right. And, you know, I, I, I absolutely respect that, but what I'd like to do is if you'll allow me, I'd like to provide some value to you in the beginning. And then if you ever decide to hire an agent down the road, you at least give me the opportunity to put, you know, to, to interview for the position. <clears throat> so what I would do was, yeah, I would, I would hold open houses for them. Um, <clears throat> I'd say, you know, if, if a buyer comes through, you know, I would represent the buyer. It's free marketing on your property. Um, and you would, you know, offer to host an open house for them. 
that's a great way to start building rapport for a FISBO mm -hmm. and especially a really great way if you don't have a whole lot of business yourself in the beginning anyways. Right. Um, and I cannot clear my throat. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but that's, that's a great way to get in there. And then also providing a CMA. If you're good at doing CMAs and you don't mind spending an hour to, to build that rapport with them, a lot of FISBOs have no idea how to price their property. And they literally, before they list it on Zillow, they look at the Zillow's estimate and it says, well, you know, crap, my, this is my property is worth 400,000. I guess that's what I'll list it for, right? Um, and it may be so far off basis on where it should actually be listed. They may be a, drastically underpriced or they may be overpriced. Mm -hmm. So to offer to do a, a CMA for them is, is another really good way to give them value. Um, <clears throat> Have you had any success uh, with the with the FISBO, um, you know, the way you've been approaching it? I'm, I'm, I'm warming up. I'm warming up. Okay. And have you, you, you were there for our um, pre-listing packet uh, mastermind, right? Right. All right. Um, <clears throat> pre-listing packets are really good for FISBOs as well. Like if you could just drop it off with them to have information about you. Okay. Um, maybe if you get in there to do an open house. You can leave the packet there on their, on their desk or on their uh, okay. counter or whatnot, kind of slide it in there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's a really, um, I think that coming from a place of contribution with the FISBOs is probably the best way to convert those leads. I, I don't, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah, no, something I, I was thinking of, we, besides the CMA giving value by providing that, make sure they're pricing it correctly. Um, sometimes people have tried the approach where you really help them understand what they're doing. Um, it's like a second full-time job. And if they're, it's like, do you have an, a, a job? You do, okay. Do you understand that you also will need to be allowing access to your property at all times. Um, do you understand the legal representation um, that I could provide? Make sure that you are covered. I could at least look over your contracts, make sure that you are um, safe and clear. Um, just that trying to make sure they understand what they're getting themselves into. If they're a newer FISBO, I've seen people mention that. Right. In the script. But I would without just... trying to talk down to them. Just yeah. I would, I would just say that when you look at FISBOs, do not look at them as immediate forms of, of business. Even though they're currently trying to sell their property, I think that looking at them as a red hot lead that you can convert immediately is going to be very difficult. Okay. So try to, try to show some love and, and, and massage and, and nurture the client along the path. Um, <clears throat> now you, you had brought up the expireds. Uh, you kind of transitioned a little bit to that. Um, I guess before we transition, does anyone else have anything that has worked for them um, or that they have questions about in regards to FISBOs and converting FISBOs? All right, all right, not all at once, all right. <laughs> all right, so expireds, um, <clears throat> converting expireds. So expireds are a little different of a beast. Um, you have to have really thick skin to go after expireds. And the reason being is that, you know, expireds, I mean, literally as the name implies, they just expired off with another agent for whatever reason. I mean, it could be a multitude of reasons. They may be overpriced their property. Um, <clears throat> maybe the agent didn't market their home uh, adequately enough and there just there wasn't any movement, which in this market is pretty rare because if you list anything, it sells. Um, so typically they just don't even have to market things anymore right now, but, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm really not sure what's up in my throat guys. Um, but with the expireds, uh, you know, you're going to have to, they are a more direct approach. They are, Hey, can I have your business or Hey, can I, can I get in there? for a listing presentation. Um, <clears throat> when I used to prospect expireds, really I think the only way you can prospect them is to direct call them. Um, a lot of times they're not gonna respond to a text because they're getting 50, 60 agents texting them. Uh, when they come off the market, what happens with an expired is their phone number, their name and their property address that they had expire go into the databases like Vulcan 7 or Red X or something like that. 
and they're made public information to all the agents who you know subscribe to the services like for i have a subscription to vulcan 7 so whenever a property falls off the market um I have the ability to see what their phone number is. Sometimes I'll get five or six phone numbers. If they've ever had a number associated with that property, uh, I'll get email addresses. I'll get their address. I'll get the whole listing shows up. Um, I'll actually show you what I get. I will share screen in a second. Oh, no. Password was changed. As you're pulling that up, um, something I think I've overheard you say while you're speaking to expireds to get to kind of break the ice so they don't just hang up on you. I like it. And it really does make them laugh is that, you know, like, I know I must be, I don't know what number you get, like 50th caller for your property uh, as a realtor, but just hear me out. Yeah. Because so, it's true they get bombarded yeah. and they might just cuss you out. Yeah. So I can't pull up the uh, the database right this second, but um, yeah. <sighs> Scripts are amazing, okay? And I, I have always been anti-script script. And what that means is, you know, a lot of the scripts that people use, I've always, at least in the past, not liked them. They don't sound genuine. Um, you know, they sound like someone wrote them and put them in a book. And as a brand new agent, you need to rely on them. But as you get more comfortable and as you, you know, become more comfortable in your skin and, and having those conversations and having those you know, getting used to overcoming the objections, I would really maybe try to branch out and make those scripts your own. So it was, it was funny because I always used to, in my mind, said, well, I don't have a script. I, I, I just, I refuse to use one. And, and I realized that what I ended up doing was making my own script saying I wasn't using a script because I do the same exact thing every single time on the phone thinking I was being, you know, just anti-script, but I had ended up inadvertently creating my own. Um, <clears throat> so when I talk to expireds, it, you got to realize again that they're they're frustrated for, for whatever reason. The marketing just wasn't the right time. They overpriced their home. Maybe a contract fell through due to, uh, you know, condition and the, the timetable or the contract ran out with the other agent. So they're frustrated. So you've got to do something different, in my opinion, to get through that frustration and to humanize yourself. Because you've got, again, whoever subscribes to these services, there's hundreds of agents, thousands of agents probably here in Jacksonville who use the same exact subscriptions. So if you don't make yourself stand out or if you don't make yourself sound more genuine, they're just gonna hang up on you, right? Those first couple of days, their phone's gonna be ringing off the hook. They're not even gonna answer you, right? So. If you do manage to get through to them, and if you do decide to go down the expired route and, you know, prospect expireds, you really need to have something that makes you stand out. Whether for me, it's always been, um, <clears throat> you know, my humor. I try to inject humor into my calls. It's not exactly the most professional thing, um, but it has worked for me. So I would have jokes that I would inject into my cold calling that would be like, hey, you know, Sorry, I'm like the 70th agent who's called you this morning. I would have called sooner, but I got stuck in traffic on the Buckman Bridge, right? Just something that throws them off. Like I'm acknowledging that I've, you know, probably the 90th to 100th. I used to actually go way above. I, I used to joke and say that I'd be the 917th caller who would call you this morning. Obviously, 917 people haven't called them, but you're acknowledging that all you're doing is just adding to the amount of people who have called them. And you're trying to, you're, you're basically poking fun to yourself. Right. So um, you've got to have something that makes you stand out, whether it's in the initial pitch to them or in a voicemail, if you're leaving a voicemail. Um, but expired, you're going to have to have really, really tough skin. Um, my recommendation if you're doing expired is, like I said, be unique. But also before you ever call them, I would print out the MLS listing or have their MLS up. And maybe look through it yourself to see what could have caused their home not to sell. It's amazing how many times I've looked through expired listings and I've seen cell phone photography instead of professional photography on a $500,000 house. I've seen someone in the bathroom taking a photo. You know, they're trying to trying to get a picture of the bathroom and they've got their arm, you know, in the shot with the, with the phone. You know, it, I know it, I've seen that recently. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? How did these people get these listings? Oh my goodness. And it's amazing because because we find that 
a lot of people work with the first person who reaches out to them or they feel that connection with. It doesn't matter how much experience, you know, that person has. Um, but it does, it, it drives me insane to see, you know, a million dollar listing, you know, in, a, in an amazing area that would sell very quickly if the agent put any effort into it and, um, you know, pay for some, for some photography. And yeah. if you don't have money for photography, there are so there are companies out there that do listing advances for you, right? Like um, e commissions, one that'll do a listing advance if you if you get a listing and you think it'll, you know, it'll sell or it's in a good area, um, they'll provide you an upfront, you know, basically you have to pay it back at closing, but they'll provide you money upfront to do your marketing on the property, right? So, um, but yeah, it's it's amazing that, that the the plethora of reasons that properties expire off the market. Um, but what I do is I'd print out the MLS listing. I'd look at it and I would, I would see whether maybe it's the narrative, maybe it's the photography, maybe it's, you know, do a Google search on the property and just see how many websites it pops up on. Maybe it was their, their SEO advertising or their, their, you know, their Google advertising that they just didn't generate any, any, you know, vis visibility on the property. Um, and talk to that, use that as a talking point. Just like when I go to a listing and I'm walking through the house and trying to figure out, you know, what I can connect with, with this seller. I mean, do the same thing. What can you connect with on the seller looking at the photos? It's like you're at the house. You can look through the photos and see anything that you may, you know, have similarities with them or, or what have you. So <clears throat> have any of you guys like ever tried calling expireds or, or ex message expireds? I mean, I haven't. I'm... Crystal, have you at all? I have not. Um, I looked into it, like um, just seeing how many expired listings were like in my area, but I never actually um, called them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do any of you guys actually have interest in? And getting told to buzz off and 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 attempt to <laughs> to get your feet wet with expireds. I don't mind to be honest. Well, I think that's because your background. You're you're used to um, you know, dealing with a little bit rougher of a customer and the wholesale business. I mean, I haven't had the courage to do it yet. <laughs> okay, um, maybe I could. Uh, I, I could at, at the cost of my my. Um, uh, my sanity and uh, and whatnot. Maybe I could I could hold a, a coach or not a coaching a uh, a live cold call session. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And you guys yeah. could laugh at me under underneath. Yeah, me. that'll be good. I, yeah. I agree. Well, it's it's funny because like you know everyone and I have made a ton of money in the last in, in the in the years past off a of cold call. Like expired and Fizbo were my bread and butter for a long time, or also internet leads, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. I, I've I've made a good bit of money off them. I've been successful with it. I still to this day screw up almost every time I make a call because it's, it's just, we're, we're not robots, right? We're, we have human nature and we have human mess ups. I mean, you, my, my wife will laugh at you or laugh at me. See right there. I, I for a slip. Um, my wife will laugh at me all the time because when I do ex, uh, voicemail drops or when I call expired to do a voicemail drop, she, she laughs because I'll be in the other room and I'll mess up like 15 times. No one's around me and I still can't record a voicemail. Me neither. Perfect. And she'll she'll hear me in there go, okay, this is Chris with your damn it. This is Chris with that gum it. <laughs> so so don't feel bad like messing up a, a call or messing up a voicemail. I, I I've been doing this for going on eight years now and I still do it every time. So I, yeah. I, I good. I have a tip just no matter who we're calling. I'm uh, more introverted the last few years staying at home with kids and stuff versus when I was a teacher, but um, something I've seen, it really helps the energy level and it's nervousness of being rejected and told no hundreds of times is to stand up and walk around and smile. So even if you're in your room by yourself, you're going to exude that. And I've also heard that on the phone, our tone is so much lower and receives, um, is being received if it's more negative. Um, you have to go above and beyond the normal pitch that you would be familiar with because they can't read our facial expressions. So smiling, walking around, just feeling that energy and we're naturally gonna sound more confident. So I'm you can try that. that. I like that, I'm gonna try that. So um, 
Yep, yep. Uh, so, so if from, you, good. So for myself, I've never tried. Um, I did for sale by owner, but I but I didn't do for sale by owner as an agent. I did it as a wholesaler, mm-hmm. and um, I had an experience with that. But it also helped me um, as an agent because um, I was nervous as a wholesaler calling these people. But um, what hiccups I had is getting back in touch with them. It's like they are interested. But once you try to reach back out to them, like, you know, to get them to. But I but I also seen a video where it said, you know, mentioned that you're an agent as well because it's getting them to trust you. But um I'm saying all this to say that I, I've, I've had experience calling for sale by owners, but it's like reaching back out to them. They don't want to answer the phone or you text them. They won't answer you back or something like that, you know? And, and what ends up happening there and the reason, I think the reason for that is because just the amount of people, they get so inundated with phone calls. Um, I, I, I can't even guess how many, I mean, even, okay. So we, we listed our property, Back in Spoonbill, was it three years ago, honey? I think I think it was about three years ago, three three or four years ago. We sold that house, and when I sold it, I actually had expired it um, the day after I had listed it because I, I I put it active, and then we expired it for for a day so I could fix something and, and I didn't want to get requests and so I put it back active. And I remember that one day I had expired it for like the next four or five days, my phone was off the hook. Like I mean non-stop I, mean, I, I was getting 15 20 phone calls and texts a day and especially in the market that we're in right now where everyone is just absolutely desperate for inventory and desperate for listings um you know you, you just got to be understanding and sympathetic with the sellers or the homeowners that they're just getting absolutely slammed with calls and text so you can't take it personal i, I will say that there has been <laughs> there's been customers that i have absolutely chased for years like i've got a gentleman who's listing his property in middleburn uh and uh mr sneed and beautiful home uh it was an expired listing about two years ago and he is just now getting around to to about the next month and a half or so putting it on the market so you're gonna have to make sure getting into the business now or or just starting your career now that you're setting yourself up for long term and i don't i don't mean just you know, from a marketing dollars, I mean, from everything, from, from even your CRM, the way you handle your CRM now and the way you, tr- you track your customers, you're going to need to make sure that you're, you're setting in long-term drip campaigns, follow-up campaigns, because some of these customers, they're just, especially with expireds, they're not, if they have a bad experience now, it may take them two to three years to be ready to list their property again. They may do it immediately, right? They may be looking for another agent right away, but some of them you know, they're going to be years and years out. I have customers that, again, I've, I've been following up with for years and they're just now ready to do something. Yeah. So don't take it personal if they don't respond. Just re- re- realize that they just have a crap load of people just hounding them. And another thing, uh, another issue that I've been running into, um, and I don't know if anybody else had this problem, where if you get in contact with a for sale by owner, they don't want to deal with an agent but they're agreeing to, if you get them a buyer, they'll give you 3%. I've been, I've been shot that line so many times. It's like, I don't want to list with an agent, but if you bring me a buyer, I'll give you 3%. It's like, well, where's the guarantee in that? Well, I mean, so here's the thing. Um, if you had a buyer, you would just write a broker's compensation agreement form and have the seller sign it before you ever submit an offer to them, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of times... They don't have an issue co-oping with the. And I have seen some that were the the FISBO has been like, well, the, your agent's paying your commission, which is so out of touch. Uh, people really just are inexperienced with the process and they're inexperienced mm-hmm. with the transaction, and we can't really fault them for that because, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And when you list your property for sale, I mean, if if you've never dealt with agents before, if you've never dealt with a real estate transaction process before, you don't know that it's a standard and customary thing for you to pay the buyer's agent's commission, right? Um, But, you know, if I had a buyer and I was going to see a FISBO, if they had nothing in the Zillow uh, narrative, or if they're not paying a flat fee company to list it on MLS for them, and the co-op is not clearly expressed, right? 
I would send a broker's compensation agreement to that listed or that, that FISBO before I ever showed the property to my buyer. Uh, well, that's Chris, me personally. Let, Chris, let me ask you a question. Sure. Um, um, speaking on that, so say if the, the seller says, okay, well, if you bring me a buyer, I give you 3%. Who pays? So, okay, forget it. I answered my own question. I had to think about it for a second. Because yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, because, you know, I was looking at it. Okay, you're working for the seller, but actually not working for the seller. You're working for the buyer now. In that circumstance, correct. And yeah. they're willing to pay just the 3% across the board. Okay. Correct. And so, you know, it, it becomes the thing where where when you, and Nicole, when you get that, when you get that objection, right, that is, that is the age old FISBO objection to basically them telling you, I'm not, I'm not listing my property, right? Like that's, that's what they're saying in that. It, it's nothing more than that. They're not saying anything special uh, that like they're, they're normally going to co-broke for the most part. So when they tell you, Hey, bring me a buyer. Um, did we lose someone? Who did we lose? Uh, Nicole, Carrie, Crystal, uh, yeah, Annalie, Anna, 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 okay. Um, so, you know, in, in the circumstance like that, where they're, I mean, they're, all they're doing is they're giving you a line to get rid of you. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> mean, but they're, but that's what they're doing. They're just giving you a line to say, you know what, just bring me a buyer. Like, I don't, I don't want to list my property. I don't want to pay you any extra commission. Just bring me a buyer and I'll pay you the normal buyer's agent commission. And in that circumstance, that's where I would, I would pivot. You've got them on the phone, right? And say, look, I, I totally get it. I understand you don't want to pay a commission to a listing agent fine. I get that. But how about this? Let me at least help you move the property. And, uh, you know, let me, let me give you a CMA. Let me hold an open house for you. Worst case, I've, I've spent some of my time helping you out. I don't get paid for it. That's worst case. Best case is, and you don't tell them this, this is what you're thinking internally. Best case is you provide, you know, some assistance to this guy or this lady, and they get frustrated by not being able to sell it on their own. And who are they going to turn to when they can't? They're going to turn to the person who has helped them through the process, even though you haven't been getting paid for doing it. Okay. Right. I do have a potential listing right now, but mine came from a referral from Mock City. Yeah. Um, do you have you are like what, what, what stage are you at with it? Oh, I, I'm 90 percent sure I have the listing. Um, she told me she's listing it with me. It's a condo. And I was already down there this morning looking at it. So, um, yeah, they want to list it in May. That's um, their son's graduating college. And um, so they don't need it anymore. He's living in it right now with a roommate. Okay. Well, if you need any help with it, let me know. Okay. If you need like evaluation or need me to look over your evaluation once you do it or anything like that. Okay. Well, you know what I do need? From you guys that I would like I I didn't make it to your live class on the um, pre-listing package but I did watch the recording and I would like to get um emailed maybe your old pre-listing sure. um just to use as a template please okay we're working on making our new one it's from century 21 um because we haven't made the new one with exp and updated things um we've switched gears but it's such a large file, it's going to be a shared Google Doc. So I can send okay. it to you guys. Yeah, we may have gone overboard when we made that one. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, you say, Nicole? I said, can I get one of those too? Yeah, we're going to make it public on the website. Oh, okay. um, so it'll be in, I believe, seller resources eventually okay. um, is where we'll put it. So that'll be on the, on the site there. <clears throat> so, all right, we've covered FISBO. We've covered expired. Uh, what's up, Demi? Demi. She's, she's ghosting us. Okay, it's all good. Mm -hmm. um, so let's switch over to uh, buyer leads. Um, so how many people here, if anyone, has actually uh, been spending money or generating um, make it rain or KV core leads? Me. Okay. I have the KV core, but I'm not really impressed with it. You're not impressed with the system? Yeah. It's, okay. it's like the leads are um, uh, bad numbers. 
or they don't answer the phone or the numbers, they'll um, they'll go on the website, but they'll unsubscribe them to receiving text mm -hmm. or to receive an email. Well, and, and bear in mind, this is the nature of internet leads. This is nothing, regardless of where you get these leads from, whether okay. it was a, a Google AdWords, you know, squeeze page, whether it's KV Core, Make It Rain, whether it's Boomtown, wh whatever okay. system you use, these leads are almost, the, they're, they're the same. They're okay. internet, Google AdWords leads. So these leads typically have a three to 5% conversion ratio, okay. okay? But what you need to make sure you're doing is you can't turn it on for one month and expect to, to generate three pieces of business. It doesn't work like that. Okay. It's gotta be something that you commit to for about five to six months to start seeing some type of, you know, um, return on an investment come. Now, again, I, I think I've worked out the numbers quite a few times for, for people, but at a three to 5% conversion ratio, let's just go on the low end at three. Every hundred leads you have, you should have three conversions from those hundred leads. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now a hundred leads in make it rain is going to cost you about a thousand bucks. All right. They're about $10 per lead at a thousand dollars all in with three conversions out of a hundred. Okay. A average commission check here in this in Northeast Florida is about six thousand dollars. So eighteen thousand commission for one thousand spent. You should be at approximately a fifteen to eighteen times ROI if you can you know if you commit long term with good follow up and you know tracking on your leads. That's the type of return you should have on those leads. Okay. Now. You're going to have duds. You're going to have leads that, that no one responds, bad phone numbers, screw you, F off. You're going to have all the, all the gambit of responses to you. But I would tell you that they, they do work. They're the same exact leads I did my first year into business, and I had 47 transactions off of internet leads or, or Google AdWords leads. So the, the hard thing about them is, is we're not disciplined in nature. Right, we we have a million excuses, or a million things that come up in our lives that, that demand our attention, mm -hmm. and so what happens is we think we're doing the follow up we're supposed to be doing, or we think that we're doing, you know, the touch and the feel that we're supposed to be doing with these customers and the amount of times that we should really be reaching out to them, and we're not doing a shred of it, and I'm I'm as guilty as anyone with this, right. I have so many leads and, and I've, I turned a lot of them over to Allison lately. Um, but I have so many leads that I get that I just, I'm horrible with follow-up nowadays. We just get so busy. We have so much else to do between, you know, the coaching and the, and the mentoring and the, the, you know, the recruiting and stuff like that. My personal outreach to customers has suffered tremendously. So my, my conversion rate is drastically low, um, you know, comparative to what it used to be. But when I was converting at a very high level, and I and again high level was like five percent for internet leads, mm -hmm. um, I I was dude I'd get a lead in, say I get a lead in on Monday morning, I have by Tuesday I have called them three times, I've emailed and I've texted them before Tuesday morning, and and why is that? Well, the customer is in the real estate mindset. They went onto your site. They went on. They're looking at properties. At that moment in time, their brain is on real estate that day, right? Or that next day. They're, that's all they're thinking about when they're on your site is they're looking at real estate. And NEFAR statistics have shown, and I, I don't remember the exact number, so I'm not going to give an exact number, um, but it is a very high percent that people work with the very first agent they speak with, especially on the buy side, right? It, it's a little bit less so on, on the listing side because people – they have more time to interview and they feel, you know, they can slow it down a little bit. Well, we got stuff we're working on the house. We got repairs we're looking to do. So we're going to interview some agents. Buyers, on the other hand, ooh, shiny thing. I want to go look at it, right? Like that's where their mind's at. They want to go look at that property. So the first person who shows them value by being able to send them listings or being able to open that door for them typically gets their business, regardless of the experience of that agent, right? So it is extremely important that you, when you get a, a brand new lead uh, on KB Core or any other type of advertising you're doing, that lead needs to be called within, honest to God, like within three minutes. Um, 
I've got a third party referral source that I get leads from where I get dinged if I don't contact them within five minutes. I get a, I get a negative uh, score on my account if I don't contact them immediately because they realize how important it is for that initial contact to be almost immediate. Like they click that property, you should be dialing them almost. Okay, wow. okay. Right. So for your initial contact guys, I'd, I'd be, I'd be hounding those people. I mean, not to be abrasive, but you get a new lead, call them three times that first day. The first time, two times you call them, don't leave a voicemail. Just make it look like, you know, they missed a call. They missed a call twice from a number. It must be important. I got I to gotta call this person back. They called me twice from a number that I don't know. Right? And then that third one, if they don't answer you about the third one, then maybe leave them a voicemail. And when you say hound them, so you're saying that within the first 24 hours, of course, the first five minutes or three minutes, um, how often do you want to go through that first week, second week, month? And then is that where a drip campaign gets in, right? If yeah, people so aren't unfamiliar with that. With, with buyers in this market, with the way property is going and, and, and as hot of a commodity as just leads are in general right now, if I got a lead today, how I'd work them would be the first day, I'm going to call them three times. The first two times, if they don't answer, I'm not leaving voicemails. The third day, I'm leaving a voicemail, and it would be something to the effect of, you know, hey, this is Chris with eXp Realty. Um, I noticed you were online browsing some properties. I'm a buyer specialist here in Northeast Florida. Um, try to get a hold of you to find out exactly what we're looking for. And it would be, that would be like a very short, sweet, this is my voicemail. This is what I'm dropping. You know, I obviously leave my phone number after that. Um, I would I would recommend from a psychological standpoint that when you leave voicemails or when you leave text, it is we and we're. We, we together, me and you, me and the buyer, right? We're a team. We're looking, what are we looking for, right? To sort of build that, um, that just mind trick to say, okay, this is my agent. You know, what are, what are we looking for? The first day, like I said, I'd call them three times, leave a voicemail on the third time. The second day, I'd probably call them twice. If they're not answering, I'm probably leaving a text, you know, sending a text. Third day, I may call them once. Fourth day, I may text them and email them. And then probably the fifth day past is when I'm going to start, you know, okay, well, they're obviously not super serious. They're not getting back with me. I have made an ample amount of effort to reach out to them and get them on the phone. At this point in time, it is obvious to me they are not ready for a conversation, okay? They're not ready to have that direct conversation with you. And at that point, I'd probably set them on a long-term, you know, follow-up plan. In a perfect world, and I'm not, I don't, at all do this anymore. I just don't have the bandwidth personally to do this. I would probably set them on a once a week email about the market, what's going on, you know, what's, what's happening. I'd probably call them one more time each month. Right. And then after month five or six, if they just completely ghost me, I'm probably setting them on a once a month email drip campaign mm -hmm. that I don't touch. And it just automates and sends out to them trying to re-engage them back into the site or back into the, the listings. Because you got to realize you can't, you can't, you can't chase that person forever. You know, it is nice to have something you set there that automates and, and, and does its thing, but you should be having new leads taking its place. Right. So that second week, when you set that on your once a week drip campaign, you should be having more leads that are coming through that you're having to call three, you know, three times a day. So, you know, you're, you're going to have to make sure that you're setting them on a, a trickle a trickle down effect or I, I guess is the right way to say it but um yeah they become less important to you because they haven't responded so the leads that come in are your a number one priority as soon as they come in they're your top priority and everything else gets kind of pushed a little bit thoughts do you think i call too much do you guys think i hound too much Y'all so quiet. I guess it's the <laughs> Monday morning. <laughs> I mean, you're hounding a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, so you got to realize. That's, that's why you're successful. So, hey. You know, it's, it's funny. And, and to give you an idea of like my mentality when it came to prospecting is I used to, 
I, I say this 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 one because right, this actually happened, and it was funny uh, at the time. And looking back on it, maybe I, I probably was too much of a smart ass when I did it, if I'm being honest. Um, but I I called this person so much, and they finally answered one day, and they said, "Stop effing calling me." <laughs> I kid you not. The next day, I texted them. <laughs> um. Because you know, I, my my smart ass said, "Well, they said not to call them, but you know, I, I'm still trying to trying to make a living." So. <laughs> I don't want y'all to do that. Y'all get in trouble. Don't do that. <laughs> um, well, I will say that you, that's one extreme, but you have had people actually appreciate your um, hard work to continue to reach out and that communication. And then they gave you the listing because you were so determined. So the you one bugged them so much, like, I guess you'll work hard for me because <laughs> you were bugging me so much. So that one listing that I'm yeah. getting a month and a half that I was talking about like two years of follow-up. Um, he, he, I remember him one time texting me. He's like, dude, if I ever list this property again, I will list it with you because you have hounded me nonstop. And I know that you would find me a buyer for it. So yeah. It's going to work for some people and it won't work with others. Right. right. So I don't know. Um, one quick thought I had when we were talking about the bogus numbers, wrong numbers, disconnected, and that's really frustrating to get the lead when it's like that. Um, I, why that happens with internet leads is because they really just wanted to get the information themselves. They may be really early on in the browsing period and they don't want that communication and conversation yet. So they just literally went on the site, started typing in stuff. They didn't want to be contacted. So they just put in random numbers and emails. So that's where you get that. Uh, and sometimes they may do something like a period and uh, extra thing in their email. So I've been able to actually contact people when I noticed they were doing something slightly off from a real email. Sometimes people will put just a different area code. And if you just switch the area code to 904, it ends up being their right phone number. Um, typically, I find that if they put an email address, their email address is, is usually right. Because what they feel is that, well, I don't want anyone calling me, but I, I probably need to put my email address in here to get the listings, right, or to get them sent to me. So a lot of times you'll find that the email addresses are right, even if the phone numbers are incorrect. Um, and then you can always, you know, shoot them an email and say, hey, look, you know, I uh, just wanted to reach out to you about your home search. Um, you know, it, it appears that your number is a non-working number. Do you mind providing me with an accurate phone number? And sometimes you'll get it, sometimes you won't. But again, you, you just have to ask. And um, you know, these, these customers are going to do something when they're going to want to do something. And if you're the one who's been consistently offering your assistance and offering, you know, those nuggets about the market, if you've, you know, set them up on a drip campaign talking about you know, absorption rates and statistics and, you know, how many people are moving from area to area, or if you notice that they're looking in St. Augustine and all their properties are in St. Augustine, talking about, you know, cool things coming to St. Augustine or fun things to do, or like there's all types of different, you know, drip campaigns or drip messages you can send. And it's just making you seem like you're the market expert there or that you're very, you know, attentive to your customers. And I've had people that I have set on MLS drip campaigns or email drip campaigns that I have completely forgot about. <laughs> and I will randomly get an email. Hey, I'd like to see this property. I had nothing to do with it. And, you know, uh, James, what's else? I, I honestly forget his last name. I had a, I had a James Baird reached out to me after two and a half years of sending MLS listings to him. Totally forgot they were even on the, the schedule still. And he's like, hey, I want to go see this property. So don't underestimate the power of an automated item that you set and forget. But mm -hmm. make sure that you're doing it on each customer um, because you, you never know when that one person's going to call you up that you completely forgot about and say, Hey, I'd like to go write a contract and, and you get a six to eight to $9,000 commission check. That sounds even better. <laughs> so um, we are hitting right about uh, the, the 50 minute mark. Um, does anyone have any other questions or any other objections that they've run into that they want to talk through or they want to, you know, figure out how we would handle and get around them. Hey, did you um, find out if we can sign um, potential buyers up for uh, um, listings on um, 
the what is it the kv core so you should be able to so without actually, that's, just seeing the exp listing so you you should be able to now there is actually a class and this is what i was going to bring up to you guys i posted a thing earlier in the dream chasers group about the daily training calendar from the go-getters group mm -hmm. on thursday at noon eastern there is an in-depth kv core lead generation with Nar with uh, nick markey Mm -hmm. um or Mac macri sorry um from what i've been told from chris snow and some other people nick is a freaking wizard when it comes to kv core mm -hmm. so if you are looking for ways to navigate that system and turn mm -hmm. that system into a lead generation tool i would highly recommend going to that class nice. now that one should be recorded as well if you can't can't make that but i i i definitely I definitely think that's something you don't want to miss if you can, you know, allot that time in your schedule. Chris, can you make me part of that group? I'm not part of that group. Sure. One second here. Um, Does anyone else need an invite to that group, by the way? Am I in that group, Chris? This I, is right. Yeah, let me see if you are real quick. Okay. Let me see if. Is it Anisha or Anisia? I never. Anisia. Anisia. Okay. Let me see if you're in here. Okay. You are not. So there's an invite going to you and Carrie. Thank um, you. Yep, Carrie. Carrie, I don't even have you on my friends list. You guys, you guys, to add me on Facebook. Okay. So one, once you add me on Facebook, I can send you the invite to the Go Getters group. Okay. Okay, and then one more little bit of information. I do have my second pending contract. Hey. Hey, heck yeah. Yay, congratulations. You're crushing it. Thank you. Jeez. Um, also, also, I need, if any of y'all are interested, I need open house volunteers for this weekend. Um, one Saturday and one Sunday, uh, 12 to 3. One's going to be at Riachulo Lane, which is in St. Augustine um off of us1 in las colinas and the other one is 32205 in jacksonville i'll take st augustine okay all right so we got that um please if you can uh, make it next wednesday we are doing lead generation so mm -hmm. we talked about converting today and some methodology and mindset for converting uh wednesday we will talk about the actual methods both free and paid uh, mm -hmm. for you to generate additional business. Um, so if you can help it, uh, don't miss it. We'd love to have you guys all here. And uh, I do appreciate each and every one of y'all for, for getting on and actually making this a, a mastermind instead of me just talking to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you said that this you, Wednesday or next Wednesday? What's up? You said this Wednesday or it's, next Wednesday? So this Wednesday. Next Wednesday is, is something okay. uh, I don't have it in front of me, but this Wednesday at noon is lead generation. Okay. Thank so, you, Chris. All right. Thank you. Holla you later, guys. Bye. All right. Bye.